noting the Schedule C basically is an income statement in and of itself, having business income minus business expenses, which you could basically call business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income rolling from the Schedule C into line one income of the income tax formula. The formula outlining the calculation on the Form 1040, this being the first page of the Form 1040, the Schedule C ultimately rolling into line eight, additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income, part one, additional income, Schedule C rolling into line three, business income or loss. This is the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, has an income statement format. Income minus expenses, we're on the expenses, which is typically the largest category in terms of different types of items within it. Some expenses mean more difficult than others, such as depreciation, where, as we saw in prior presentations, even if we're on a cash-based system, we have to do an accrual type thing because the tax code forces us to do so, which is in alignment with generally accepted accounting principles. The tax code basically borrowing accounting principles in this sense, putting fixed assets on the books as an asset, which is a balance sheet account. This is an income statement. Where is the balance sheet? We don't have one, but there could have depreciation schedules which show us the balance sheet activity of the asset account of the fixed assets and the accumulated depreciation to get to the book value and allows us the expense calculation on a, a per year type of basis. Now, remember that as we do these calculations, then we have the part that is normal for accounting basis, which is basically the maker's depreciation, which is a form of double declining balance. And then the abnormal components, which are added for tax code reasons, such as stimulating the economy, lobbying, political influence and whatnot,